interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricketude Busting Episode BTW RLM 383. And Daryl, I noticed over at UCY, uh, all I can suggest is turn down your speakers. This has always been the same over here. I don't want to have it blown up, blown up your equipment. But thank you for tuning in when you do. Folks, this is a uh, more I've been doing all this stuff, helping people and what we're supposed to be doing to counter everything that you're seeing going nuts. And it really is given to us to do that. I'm, ha- I'm really seeing how we are a, no- a knowledgeable people. We have great ideas about what we think has gone on, but we've really missed the boat, if you will. And uh, the, the ship has sailed and we're still standing around and that ship is going somewhere. And uh, we have to figure out a way to fix that because that ship is now dragging us along in a little skiff that we've uh, apparently all been shoved into and that's not the way it was supposed to be and I don't think anybody believes it's the way it was supposed to be and the way I keep suggesting to you this place was wired was remember you have the republic if you could keep it and they were wrote that because they knew they were coming to steal it no one really fully understood that I really have a bigger appreciation for what we were told by the early on by the people that were still formulating this place up to try and figure out how to resolve all the failures of history and put it into a package that people could actually live in in some sort of coexistence that uh, handled the the way people really are. But we're not so nice, as I say. But anyway, move on. A couple of things I wanted to touch base. I think I caught if I got had this right. I never I didn't get back with Grimner on uh, what I was asking for last week. I haven't got anybody back to tell me, but Grimner put in. What I was asking for from identifying what Traman von Seltzem and Fluke is doing on his titles was I think he said it was L33T. It's a style of um, substitution. I did look at that. That looks like what it is, but it, that's e- Traman's website has even different uh, than that. It's the same kind of thing, but different. So I still would like to find out that information anybody can track that down for me i'd appreciate it. i looked around i couldn't find anything that would that was as as um integrated in in language and characterization as that was uh moving into bit shoot comment and thank you and this is a few weeks back yeah grin elite I, elite i got that part but uh, just wanted to the way it's written is all i was going on the um they go, getting on to bit shoot torner shaman a couple of weeks ago I, I didn't get this quite i didn't see this before but uh, he, he was saying the relative to these these masks and I, what we call I called the masquerade. There's some comments that that Torner Shaman has made. You may want to get over to Bitshoot uh, when you get there. Look at them. I don't really remember now the the. I'm sorry, I, I don't remember now the the uh, broadcast that I did this on, but one of the recent ones. He says the mask is a medical device, and so I thought this was interesting to tell you uh, relative to how. I see you're going to have to know to respond. Everybody I'm hearing is just kind of capitulating to this thing, and I guess that's okay, but that's not going to stop any of it. And the fact that we're having to capitulate, it, it means that we're not, we're certainly not that free, and we're making stories to ourselves. But the assertion that it's a medical device, yes, it is. And so we have a, but we have two conditions. We have the medical device as maybe being prescribed, and we also have the one that's being used by the profession, which I talked about, which the OSHA talked, and what's, um, OHSA talks about relative to the mask is actually a medical device for safety for the workers to from so that they don't infect you when they're working on you. And so there's a whole this whole light whole um, analysis. Tom uh, Torner Sharman goes on to this point. These people are practicing medicine without a license. That's exactly what one of my responses would be. Are you my doctor? And you start to bore in on someone trying to attack you with whether or not they really have the the ability to say what they're saying to you. Not only would they be practicing medicine, but they would also have to be saying that you were a, you were practicing medicine and, and, and doing something like a surgical procedure on it. So there's a bunch of fraud going on. Not that you argue, you just, if you need, need you find out what you need to say to counter somebody's position. So you really don't want to get in a fight. You just want to move on through. You want to convince people that you're okay in a way. My my end result to all this is that if the mask works, what's anybody wearing a mask's problem? Uh, it works, so what's the problem? And then, and then I get to say, but you, I'm not, so you have to stay six feet away from me. Uh, ten, ten on, on some estimation. So it all depends on how you how you want to do this. But the underlying problem is 
you're being imposed by someone. And I told you the problem with this is the third party interference that the state put on the businesses and you. And so you really can't fight and no one feels comfortable fighting a business owner. What was it their problem? At that point, I'm thinking, well, why aren't, isn't anybody in asking, have you thought about challenging this order and getting this off your back? Now, lots of businesses may not want to. They may not be capable. I'm looking and seeing there's a, we, I'm in a society of people that are, are incapable. I'm talking very basic stuff here, not real a lot. I tell you about it all the time. When it comes to actually doing the work it's going to take, I'm finding there's a big disconnect. And hopefully I get to the, through this today. I'm going to show, take one statute. I'm going to show you how we're supposed to go through that to develop your position in order to counter what has been handed to a tyrant called your governors. Uh, but right now, I just want to point on going through Tom or Shaman's comments. They uh, gave me things to think about for you to think about as well. I've discussed the mask as a tool of the profession, which means, remember, OSHA says and, and the uh, FDA says, I think it was the FDA, and DuPont says, uh, the ones who make the N95s that brand, uh, we read, I read it to you, they require as part of their cautions that you be trained in how to use them. This is not, this mask is not just anything. Certainly a face covering is nothing. And I'm not talking, we're not talking here, uh, Tom's not, uh, or shaman, torn, or shaman, uh, torn Earth Shaman is not talking about the efficacy of a mask. They're just, we're just looking at what his position is. The people that are imposing this are, are practicing law without a li- uh, practicing medicine without a, li- a license. The mayor, uh, the governor, the mayor, whoever is mandating the use of the medical mask is breaking the law, right? And this is our problem. This is where the burden's on you to prove that because, and it's becoming even more prevalent as I've been helping people, you're going to have to counter the Bar Association's judge who is handed, they're supposed to check this, and they didn't. They just handed the governor's tyrannical power. Well, we can go back through, and you may have to do this as this thing is getting torn down, uh, run down, you're going to have to sh- expose the bar association in the, uh, and the, uh, and the judge for allowing this and consistent with the bar association's policy. And what did we talk about that? Remember, and you bring this up, you just cite to it. Hopefully you have a copy. You cite to it and you say right here in this house uh, delegates resolution of the bar, these three actually from 1991. And we went through all what, I don't remember all the years anymore, 19, uh, 2013. And it was another one that said that you're going to promote sustainable development, the, the, the effects and goals of which are exactly what's been happening to the pu- public, counter to the Constitution. And so you're going to have to make a slightly different statement to actually put the pressure on those that are not checking the excesses of another branch of government, but are actually complicit in it because all their agents are sitting there. Now, I've said a whole lot of words there. It's not a whole lot of words to get down. It's a statement of facts. It's fact after fact laid out. But but here, so you can go down the practicing without a license if you want to. That's the result. That's the consequence that's gone on because you failed to maintain a standard of due process relative to a communicable disease. That's where we're going to go at near the end of the broadcast. We're going to, I'm going to show you how that is. Now, it looks like, you know, we had to have had this extensive discussion this week with someone I put a lot of time into to, to try and clarify this for them. I think they can carry this through. It, it's that the governors did not, they came under general emergency principles, not the medical principle. And those that started on the medical moved to general. And now it looks like everybody is, they're untouchable. That's not the truth. And you have to use the same statute I've been telling you in order to set the standard by which even the governor had to follow, which they didn't. And that standard required what, generally? We just say, what did it require but the finding of the cause? We don't even get to the masks because you don't have a mitigation strategy that can work unless you find the cause. And so we go to the, we, there is no stated objective basis under a general, a general emergency. You have to develop it. It was required. You have to assert that. That's why I've been telling you to go this way. Anyway, so moving on here, what uh, Torn Earth Shaman says, uh, press charges people. Exact, yeah, that's the point. You, what I'm talking about is how you press charges, so to say. You need to assert your own protection. You need to be responsible enough to do that to yourself. Otherwise, you're going to be you're going to be in a society where well, it's the dystopian future that you you want because you're not stopping it. 
And he goes on to say here, they are not uh, your personal physician, and we retain the right of declining the medical treatment we don't want. That's an extension of the first argument. That's right. That's what I told you about uh, here when I was talking about the actual principle here where they were tossing out the hydrochlor hydroxychloroquine doctors and blocking them. That's an interference, I wrote this again last night, of your personal right, the pr private right of your doctor-patient relationship. They're interfering with all that. So you, that would become part of that angle that you, that cause that you want to bring. And yes, I'm asking folks, press charges. Charges generally, you can't prosecute charges. I should have told you a lot. Although I understand possibly, and it's still checked by a bar association member or whatever guild they have up in Canada, you can press charges privately, which is kind of a neat, a neat thing. I, when I was uh, work, uh, thinking about that, that's kind of equates to what I tell you about doing an, ex, um, an injunction, a, a collateral attack on their charges. It works a similar way. Uh, without the interference of the bar member or the prosecutor to come in and take the case or not. Uh, anyway, so we move on here. So you can do the retain the right to decline medical treatment. Yeah, they're getting involved. So I said that my question to them is, are you my medical doctor? What license do you have to get between me and my privilege to, to private privacy? Again, not an argument, just a position to make a statement and then move on. Uh, then, and he brings this up as well, the business owner need to file class action suits as well. Well, the form of the remedy is up to each business owner. If they want to get together, you could, but you're going to necessarily have to use an attorney for a class action. Uh, you will have to go through all the same. You're subject to the limits of the attorney wanting to argue the point, none of which have challenged the order. Every one of which has allowed the order, never challenged it, and so the courts gave it to the governor to be a tyrant. And so... Business owners need to file class action. Well, they need to defend themselves. And my offer would be for a business, the or governor's orders are invalid. Have you challenged it? Now, they're going to say, no, nobody wants to do this stuff. But offer that. So if they don't challenge it, then you can also say, well, I'm not liable to your lack of defending yourself. That's another angle. An angle. That's another reason why you don't have to, have to comply. And you're in a discussion anyway. You should be able to help people, if you are in the know and done your study, you should be able to help people to break through this, this nonsense as, as well. If nothing more, why aren't you promoting, listening to the Behind the Woodshed broadcast, uh, that they would be informed, find a couple that speak to that, uh, what they might be able to do. You know, I don't know why, why we're, I'm not getting the promotion from the people that uh, listen to me all the time. And I don't mean the promotion from the sense, oh, look, promote me. No, this is things and information you're not told that sit right there. You can read for yourself that need to be done. The lack of doing causes and continues the harm upon you and everybody else. And he goes on to say, what uh, what I want is a full disclosure about what is ha really happening. Exactly. That's what we'll go through near the end of the broadcast. I don't want to waste, um, wait, spend a lot of time here, but I need to get to that because I'll explain how you do that. It's simple letters or phone calls, and you get the basis of what you, depending on what you want to do, you get the basis of that full disclosure or the lack of it, which is what you're looking for, where ultimately there was a duty to make, that it has to be there. Now you're getting, now you're getting to where you need to be. Yes, we all want full disclosure. You can't sit back and tell me in a comment, I'm not talking to here on Torner Sharma's question or comment to this, I'm saying none of you who want to get full disclosure, can just tell yourself that, tell anybody else that. You have to work to go get it. Or you won't get it, you have the record of that, and where there's a duty there should have been a record, you have a cause. Pretty simple. Whether that makes a win or not is not the point. It's that you're looking to defend yourself, and you're taking everything you can and all your expectations, and you're putting that into force and effect. And I have, somehow I have an odd uh, talent, I suppose. I've developed a skill now to make, to find knots to tie these people into once you get this stuff. As I'm working with someone, I said, you can use one statute against the other. You can, and use their own statements against them by call phone calls or letters, even if you don't have the proof. You, you use the, the authority they're supposed to tell you as the proof. If they say they don't have something, you don't look for the proof. You're in an emergency. Right? You're in an emergency, you're going to have to assert your defense. Otherwise, the system thinks it's doing fine. And you heard that in that Wisconsin case. That was critical, actually. I don't know how much people appreciated being told that. A lot of people don't. And so, anyway, so moving on here, so the, nor can they claim public health as there is no constitutional mandate for the government to protect the public health or safety 
only to protect our rights. Oh, they don't even have the duty to protect your rights. That statement I will not agree with because what you I think you're missing is the fact that there has been there isn't a constitutional mandate, but there's an implied constitutional duty to do what? It's a sta- this place is established to protect, uh, not to protect in the way of you think it is, is to uh, protect the, the, through its police power, the public generally, not individually. And that's where we get to the police power, what they're using to come underneath this, what the emergencies are about. So there may not be a mandate, there's an implication because of the establishment that requires police power. And so be careful on jumping too quick that there's no mandate. Yeah, we can think that on the federal level. The state, you have to look a little bit differently. And we do have to reorient how we think. i have seeing people have a different thought about what really is really set up. And I only believe I have a better view because of my experience in dealing with it, in my reading and how I go through a statute, how I do things that no one sees. In fact, it happened again a couple times this weekend. I offered a section of a statute. I said, here's what you want to focus on. And there's no reflection of what it really says until I have to go back in and point out specifically what was to be seen. And then it's like, oh, it appears. And so we, we want to, it seems we want to rush a little bit, and we don't want to do the work that's required in the condition we find ourselves in that allows them to do what they're doing to you. And then, so we have to keep moving. I really get lost in these. I want to tell you a whole lot. So I want to move on now from that comment. Thank you, Tor- Torner Shaman. You're right, but part of this is you stepping in and just stop looking for someone else to do it. You want disclosure? Go get it. It's there to get, and you can do it on duties. Look for the duties and obligations. That's what we'll talk about a little bit later. I hope I can get there. A lot, a lot to go through again. Uh, on mines, uh, thank you for the response on the thumbs down. I, I don't mind the thumbs up or thumbs down. What I, what I would say is don't be a coward. If you're going to give me a thumbs down, give me a comment as to why. Here's my point. You got a, You may have an, an idea I've never heard of before. You don't like what I'm saying because it's counter to you? I want to hear it. No, you may not be. My mind says you don't have a clue, but that's that. I want you to prove against me. I want you to tell me why you thumbs down. That Don't, don't be a coward by jump, thumbing down like you have something to say. Any, any of you that think... You know enough to dislike anything. I do at least have the dignity to tell me why. All right. I mean, let's stand up for each other, for ourselves. Let's point out our failures. Don't just go out with a thumbs down and we walk away. See, I don't mind the thumbs down. To me, if you can't explain yourself, then all I can do is laugh in your general direction forever. It means nothing, actually, because I have a knowledge that I see no one knows at this point. You have the spirit, some of you, in it, but you don't have the knowledge that it's taking. And that, that's proven out when I can explain it, the points, that anybody that comes with a thumbs down, especially, I think, as Sound Minds found, there was a, a post on one of the YouTubes, it was a thumbs down before there was any views counted. So I don't even understand what the views that all this stuff are, except it does show that people are interacting, and that's really what I take notice of. Not much, but it's there. All it's going to take is one of you doing this right. So I'm kind of holding out. I mean, hope beyond hope, folks. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, you don't know what I mean. And I don't even know how to tell you it all. But here we are anyway. Move on. Thank you for all the comments and the things I get to see. Trying to respond. Trying to be available. Trying to guide people through things. Not by, again, no opinions. But try to go right through the black and white. And you can see, you can read right what the path is you need. And if you want disclosure, the power is there to get it. When you don't get it and there's a duty, you got to you got a remedy just to get the information. And so if none of you want to step up and write letters even like that, like I said, or make a quick phone call, not to make an enemy, not to argue with someone, look and say, I've got this statute that says there's a duty for determination. We'll get to this at the end. Can you, uh, can you send me or show me on the Internet where to get where that determination of the cause of this thing you're, you're dealing with is? I'd like to use this statute that you were supposed to comply with to get that. Can you can you show that to me? A quick phone call will tell you whether or not they understand what that is or not. And so we'll get we'll get to that. What I wanted to start with beyond that all that stuff first was a little video, a documentary it just came out. It's becoming news together with an arrest of a so an investigative journalist 
the title from this uh, article on Cryptagon was Shadowgate, and uh, he's apologizing for bringing this forward without scrutiny. scrutiny. Well, I'm going to tell you, you need to look at the, at the, new, the documentary that Millie Weaver produced. It happens to be, and I didn't know this until later, it happened to be an independent reporter of Alex Jones. Now, I'm a little bit dubious when I saw that, but still, you have to go with the truth. I don't care where it comes from if the truth is the truth. Because what they say in the documentary she releases is critical to understanding other things that's going on. Apparently, the, um, what she was arrested about the time that this documentary came out. It's at the time there was only an understanding that she was in a, a sealed indictment in Ohio for uh, obstruction of justice and tampering with evidence. It turns out there's more. Uh, there's more to it. Uh, about what was going on. Uh, it's alleged that there was a robbery. It's alleged there's domestic uh, abuse. Whatever that is, that's still going through the process under steel, sealed indictment. Apparently, they're looking for somebody else, or they have more. They claim it's to get you before the the judge, but w- it makes no sense. That's the way they do it. What I'm saying is when they do it that way and sealed, you don't have a, a notice of what you're supposed to respond to the judge about when you show up. And so that's a prejudice that still sits in the system. The occupier has done this to you. Uh, but the documentary is critical to understand the subversion, how, at least by their evidence, and they're pulling together of evidence with whistleblowers, and I have to kind of caution you better, look, listen very carefully. I'll take this on surface value to start with. The listening through it, it comes to a point r- relatively soon about something called a, a data bridge where private parties tap into government information. And it ends up being fronted by a military-industrial complex general uh, who may be retired, if I can't remember all the details quite yet. You'll get this in the video. You really need to track that video down and listen because it shows you how the system, it's integrated into all aspects of your life. This is not conjecture. You can take the same documents they show on the screen, track them down, build your dossier on what they're doing, Look at who who tracked this all down. This is very, very important. This data bridge allows all this information to bleed off into private use. That should be not actually public. And it can be used, and you'll see and infer, it can be used to blackmail people. So when you see that, even if you had honest, relatively honest people in government, they could be blackmailed in, by conditions and things made up, as I've told you. Well, now we have a better proof of that. And what's interesting to me, and actually, what's interesting to me is the they uncover how the dot, how the, all this information funneled through data bridges to private parties, of which Snowden was able to tap into. In fact, you'll hear witness a whistleblower testimony that those people that get that information are told to get it by the people inside the system in order to make it look like it was a hack. Then they get the information. It's actually an inside job. And then they make it look like a hat to cover, hack to cover their tracks. They use all this information. It's in through the system all the way to the point where they can now control your juries and your, uh, and your uh, grand jury, more as importantly. In this case, that was interesting because... In the video, if you find a place of the video of Millie doing the live broadcast of her arrest, the question was, what was the source of the warrant? And it was confirmed it was a grand jury. Well, tying to the documentary, that jury is hand-picked, it can be hand-picked, in order to get the outcome they want. The petite juries can be hand-picked, and we saw, I've told you about this corruption long ago. Here's the point of it all. It's an interesting setup, what's going on. Half, two-thirds of the way through or so. I got the impression, though, this wasn't just the expose of the of the swamp, if you will, the internal data bridging, the internal gathering information to use against the whole, whole entire populace. Uh, this was actually a counter-operation, I got the sense. And so I find this, this uh, ch- multi-dimensional chess playing going on, even in this documentary, that we might be looking at what I call op, op Trump to use the same techniques that they've been trying to defend against. You just see how what the whole system is so underneath sea, under siege that they can use all this information for us, the important thing, they move, use it against us, that they could be using it really against Millie through the, through the grand jury. 
The important thing for me to see is you now, if you were to go through, for those of you that will, take all the proofs, make a dossier of the system, what you need to start to understand and to say is you need to set up the condition in short statement facts. You cannot trust the system you're being forced into. And you threaten the system itself by that. And because this is all about confidence and trust. And I've been talking about this for a long time. These subject matters start to give us the opportunity to be able to explode, expose that. And so this video gives you whether or not, I don't know what it's being used for, but it gives you a concise information on how you can develop the proof that you can't trust the courts. You can't trust the juries. You can't trust the grand jury. You certainly can't trust the, the bar association that has allowed all of it independent of the military function, which I tell you we're sitting under all the time. It's why you see the license given, but you see examples of what's going on in the FISA system, why it's didn't, it was supposed to be a check, how, how people bring in the supposed checks, and they actually be the gateway to, to the, uh, the weapon, that they, the information, the ammunition they need to come against you, me, and anybody else. And so we have an ability as a population now to witness this thing. I don't know what this vid video, this documentary, is actually going to be being used for. I can tell you, you can glean information that you can use to protect yourself. And I'm saying you're going to need to impart, impart, even if you wrote a letter, you're going to have to need to be able to document beyond opinion that the conditions that exist that don't allow you to trust what's being done. In fact, Torner Shaman, you're looking for disclosure? How do you know it's the truth? That's why I say, well, you don't. So that's why I say you go to the objective basis to start proving it out. Why I came quickly to the observation, knowledge, and now conviction that there is no test. It's not what they say. In fact, they tell you the truth if you know how to read through the, the terminology that they're using to obfuscate the view from you. How do you, it's not that you don't trust the system. How do you prove it? This documentary will give you some of the tools. You have to make an objection and then give a reason. It's not my rule. It's what has to happen. And so this is a. I'm going to give you a link. It's actually. It says uh, what do they not? Uh, what don't they want you to see? Very interesting. It actually uh, talks about this thing called Shadowgate. You've been experiencing it for all your life. Certainly since the internet now. And uh, so, and then it, uh, so what came up uh, along with that, right before, it was actually, essentially, I think it came from, from Barman RLM on Twitter, was uh, Trump saying that he think he's been, he addressed his aides to ask about the sense about Snowden being, uh, being mistreated, being treated badly. And I saw that documentary and I responded this way, here's your Snowden choices. Donald Trump, exonerate the whistleblower by fruit of the public-private data bridge, arrest all doing the same, alter, abolish Washington, D.C. and other enemies, or allow, aid and abet treason, 18 U.S.C. 4 and 3. In other words, those statutes are when he's told he's got the, he's got the duty to do something about it. He either does something about it or he becomes a misprison of the treason that he's now allowing to not stop it. My hashtags for this were, these are not hackers, as we're told. They're not hackers. When you see this document, you'll understand. They even talk about Seth Rich, but they don't go far enough. I wish she would have went further. They're not hackers. Hashtag not hackers. Hashtag influence ops. Your whole existence is an influence op. Your whole view now is an influence op. And then I put the hashtag op Trump. I want you to know I'm not saying that's a op against Trump. I'm saying that's Trump's op. By the third, uh, two-thirds of the way in, they started to promote themselves as being victims. You hear a tone change in the whole documentary presentation. And I got the sense right there that this is a counter-op to the level of the gameplay that's been going against Trump. And you get that through how you understand how they did uh, the, oh, darn, the Analytica company. That was a setup. It was a honeypot setup. To, to do certain things. Go listen very careful how these people play the game. And you'll see evidence it all over. And a friend of mine this morning came to just see that documentary and then they, I wasn't even thinking this way because it sounds just like what they did to you, me, 
against my documentary, the pedophilia documentary of the le- of the child the services when they did the same style of thing, collected me up, put charges on me like they've got Millie. I don't know what her thing's going to be. I know what it was for me. And they take you out of the picture. They destroy the evidence against them, and then they let you go, and you deal with what you deal with. In my case, I think I'm very lucky to be alive. Most of the people that try to expose this are dead. I'm not raising that up. I'm telling you there's a real dynamic and cause behind everything we sense is going on. This is an important documentary. This shows that um, that Snowden, notwithstanding whatever my op- snow job I've told you, notwithstanding my opinion on that, this shows that he used and was likely instructed to use a public data bridge to get the information that, that he then saw, that he then exposes, exposes the condition. What you didn't hear from Snow Job, and this is where he is, the Snow Job, was the data bridge, was that this thing sits back there to siphon off all this data that they can use in so many innumerable ways, even to select a jury against you. So my use of that is prove that out. Don't make a conjecture for you. Prove out a statement of fact that you can't trust even the court you've come to. You don't just make it as an opinion. You substantiate it. And there's more to say. I got so much that needs to be said, but it, it's really not done in lots of words. It's done in in short statement of facts that may have a, a well should be supported by documents by um, by evidence in an in an addendum of, or a um, attachment. But any anyway, moving on, I got to keep moving on. So much here. There's a lot in that documentary. I was just blown away by what we don't know that's shown to be at least plausible. That's all you need. The appearance of impropriety. Remember, folks, it's all you need to destroy you in your confidence or your consent relative to agreeing to have someone try to come in and talk to you about it or, or decide, more importantly. And so you have to build this into your statements. I found out it's not a lot of statements. You just have to get those facts done. A lot of people want to talk too much. In fact, some of the people I'm dealing with, they really have a lot of information. When I explain what it looks like they need to do, a lot of that, a lot of what they're putting together just doesn't, isn't relevant. It just, the discussion is a lot more refined than what people believe it needs to be. And so it's easier than people actually believe. So when, so I keep asking you, find that wrong you want to make right, just start doing it. You'll, we'll, we could work through how to refine what you need to do and get right to what you need to do and stay on that narrow place that they can't really move you out because you really understand better than most people, uh, than they understand most people know is what the point. You don't have to be faster. You just have to be faster and better than just the next guy because the bear will catch that one. That's kind of how this thing works relative to your rights. And then you're up against, you're up against the, the condition of the system, which most of us back out of. Because we see that a lot of people, like people in the RLM chat, have done this for a long time. They've kind of fought the system, and they have their wounds to lick. And I, I appreciate every bit of it. But we're also in a position now. If we learned really what are those those wounds meant to us, I think we're in a better position to be quicker to find some of the things to orient people pe- people quicker to what they need to do. And so moving on here now, state passes massive bill uh, to target and uh, track. Bad cops to keep them off other forces. All I want to say about this is this is what I was telling you. If you want to start getting control of your of the soldiers that under the costume of police, not peace officers and not even police, but they're actually the military as you see. You live in this occupation where the state is all powerful and all rights and you seem to have none. This is what you do. You get the bills passed to to do the checks and balances. I told you to start even in policy. You don't have to go to the legislature. Just get your local police force to start building these policies. And if they get enough people to see that they're not going to protect you, you can get in a mass of people that may be more than you to actually move and get these policy changes. But here's a state of Michigan, of all places. And again, this this Black Lives Matter may give you, it's, it's not right, but it may give you, it, it's putting focus on certain things that is giving you the opportunity to move the proper thing through instead of allowing the noise to happen and then nothing moves through proper. The state of Michigan is cracking down on gypsy cops, they call them. I don't even know these terms, but here they come. 
Here you can get this, and you can say, "Listen, this is beyond. We got a situation of gypsy cops." Well, it's it's beyond that, but so be careful. They're they're confining this too. If you read what they're doing, see if you're not there to do it, they're going to move. They're move. I told you they move, and they're amoeba. They're a parasitic amoeba. They'll do just enough that they need to keep you thinking that something's right, and then they have the rest of it that they didn't. That you should have stopped in them. Bef- why you had the chance? So we have the chance. The Black Lives Matter is this opportunity as COVID-19 is that other opportunity. And so, again, I look, I've always looked at these as opportunities now, the way I see it, to cause the change that needs to be done, not the one they want to change in you. Americans are growing less willing to beg for permission to make a living. Again, a head, just a headline. Finally, you're making, you know, you're starting to sense it, but I'm going to tell you, you better sit back. It's not just about asking the permission. You have to develop, not just that you're having to ask permission, you have to develop that they had no right to do the imposition. And it's written in your constitutions. In fact, as people start seeing what they thought was supposed to do and where they're going to have to start to do it to plug and patch the holes that the Bar Association have put in to let them escape, you really necessarily have to recognize what your constitution actually said. It becomes the basis that they were to meet. What did I just say there? It becomes the basis they were to meet. It doesn't protect you. It's the basis they were obligated to meet is a different position. However subtly or not, it sounds what I just said. And so we just bring that as the foundation. It's not our opinion. People are growing less willing. As I said, the pressure's coming. At some point, you're all going to be t- taken down. The pressure building is still your opportunity to invoke the people's passion in the proper direction, and for those of you who have done all this before, that have the basic idea of how to approach the court, and you focus in on the specifics that I'm saying, you can guide these people that have just had it, and are just going to lash out, and they're going to lash out in the wrong way, They always we always do as a people, and that's what's waited for. So, here's an opportunity, Americans are growing less willing, yeah, we shouldn't have had, we don't have to ask, but they put it on us, and we've allowed it. There's a pressure coming beyond even what was what was uh, put on us to believe. There's an internal sense of injustice. You're going to have to find what that is and don't talk about it. Use it to show people the better path. We have a many steps behind to get to the place where we as a people can justify what I was hoping was going to happen in Virginia. On the mis- See, they did it wrong. The misstep of, misstep, uh, step of sanctuary counties instead of just going right to their article 3 and saying listen this is we got 95 percent of the mass of the population we have the the strength now the right under the constitution to move on our own and they didn't and so example though we get to see that same thing now with covid same thing now with the pressure coming connecticut connecticut i told you folks you're going to step up it's going to start toning it's going to come the new the noose is cinching down connecticut Issues five more fines to residents who violated coronavirus travel advisory rules. Coronavirus travel advisory rules. Let's read that again in proper code. Coronavirus is common cold. In common cold travel advisory rules is insane on its face and it's unlawful on its face. Well, how do you prove that? You have to go in and expose the orders of fraud. How do you do that? You, the objective basis of the things they were supposed to do if a real Something real was actually an epidemic. Just as I've been explaining. I've been asked to look at this question. My question back was particularly, was there something that I haven't touched? I didn't get a response. So generally, you're looking at how, you're looking at all this evidence of how they're taking you down. If you leave, they're going to, somehow they knew where these people went. I, and I didn't read deeply enough, enough to find out maybe my, my fault there, but it doesn't matter. Uh, Maybe these were all uh, aircraft, um, use, use, use of an aircraft to track you. Maybe they're tapped into your phones. I don't even know. But they knew where, where people had gone. But see, you're presumed to be guilty because the place you went was supposedly an infectious, uh, infectious a- area. And, and in fact, you can prove that's wrong too because it just is the same reason I've been telling you before. But we'll get to uh, that in a bit, how you do that. So Connecticut, you go ahead and pay the fines, thousands of dollars, five thousand dollars. This is the second, the second group they got. Is any one of those going to do a collateral attack either? I highly doubt it. You're going to do a habeas? I highly doubt it. 
Is anybody contacting Connecticut so you need to listen to the guy behind the woodshed because it sounds like he's got at least something to do? We need to have you folks attacking back against this fraud that's going on? No, we don't hear all that. I do appreciate a couple of you talking about there is no test, though. That that helps a bit because that's really the basis. And if you don't know there is no test, go back, find the broadcast, I'll explain how, or just read very carefully what you're being told. We'll touch a couple more things on this thing. As long as you allow this tyranny, it, it's going to continue. It's going to get worse. They're going to ask you like they've been. you've been told they were doing in the neighborhoods. Where you been? Where you going? What's this and that? Now if you go someplace and they deem it to be a, a threat, now you're part of the threat. So understand how how this is pulling down it, because here's we were saying it's going to go, it's going to continue. There's no end. That the fact that there's no end is actionable. I wish you folks would just get this when you hear this statement. Uh, these are good public health behaviors, uh, as this Gateway pundit uh, title star says. New Mexico tyrant governor announces she will keep COVID-19 practices in place even after pandemic. In other words, folks, forever. Now, obviously, she can't do forever because she's not going to necessarily be in office unless they've got, she can declare that. That's a, a possibility. But is she a tyrant governor as long as you don't properly address her? And this is in a state that the the, the, the Bar Association Court, supposed to be an independent branch checking the excesses, doesn't even have the judicial notice enough to see the fraud that gave this tyrant the power. And I would say a tyrant based on the, the actions, not based on this title. But they intend this to go forever. That is, by definition, not a temporary uh, communicable disease. That, by its statement, proves their mitigation ma uh, measures are improper and they're void. And so if you understand to read, even I'm just reading the title here, folks. If you just pull that together for yourself, I really don't understand why we don't have more people even swinging for the fences and missing, let alone not sw and not even getting up to plate on all this. It's right in our face what we need to be doing. Why other? And if it's not that, if the people that other don't other, if it's that other people don't see that, I don't know why, folks. We were supposed to be an educated mass of people. If what I say makes any sense at all, why don't we have all that sense together? No, we're we're senseless like that paper that people come around to knock on your door. And, and ask you questions, which I'm happy to hear a lot of people are not responding to, but I don't know if they know why why they're not responding to. My response to, to that, that the New Mexico governor intends for, at least for her her intention to go forever, essentially, and the legislatures aren't stop it, and the, and the the declaration of the continuing emergency has been allowed without without proof, without looking judicially, taking judicial notice of the actual reality, accepting the word from an executive branch that they only can, should presume might be correct. Well, no, they've handed them the keys to the kingdom. You're watching a complete destruction that you can detail out in just a few sentences of your statement of facts. Giving the people the power back. Or at least saying, because you've done this, it gives the people the power back. And then... You, you partially make a threat there. In fact, that's what you're going to have to do anyway. You don't make the threat. You just give it over to a neutral force they can't control, which is the power of the people to alter and abolish where they didn't, where it's shown to be a violation. I responded to this. It's just a mask. I sent this out uh, despite all COVID-19 orders, a video that you can watch. Uh, it's a, a restatement of someone that posted on the internet. I think it was Facebook. I couldn't get at it. I don't get on Facebook. I don't even, I got all blocks around Facebook and things, mostly mostly things that are Google as well. I couldn't find the original document that the gentleman on the video shows you the words for and or, or, or recites for you. You need to listen to what that is. It's a whole other thought process about the the hypocrisy going on and how, and you can use some of that. I wouldn't use a lot of it, but I mean, as far as like moving through a, a discourse or a, a remedy, but you can bring the concepts into a statement of facts that you need. And I point out that this, uh, you need to see it's just a mask, despite all the COVID-19 orders being unlawful because there is no test for the virus or, or infectious agent, which health authorities have to have a duty to certify, but didn't. This is in relation 
in relation to them showing that our society has fallen on its face, failed utterly, and allows it. And I'm saying despite all the COVID orders being unlawful, because there is no test. It's worse than even this video says, from my perspective. And I hope people would agree that that perspective is, is correct. Unless, or, or we have even a, a bigger problem <laughs> on top of it. I also go on to say, if we pretend there, if we pretend there's one, some infectious agent, there's no known transmission mode. Again, I'm trying to show people in the Twitter, and then I hashtag it masquerade, even if they could show that SARS-CoV-2, there was a test for SARS-CoV-2, and they showed it was the cause. They went through the scientific test to show the cause. It would develop the transmission mode. This implies there hasn't been the scientific test that it could be the cause, and there has been no declaration of how it moves. Why do you say that? Because they need to determine how this thing moves around. Whatever it is, given it's there, if we pretend it exists, how does it move about the population? Why? Because they're duty-bound to make measures to stop it. And if they make measures that don't, they're outside their authority, whether that's jurisdiction or delegation or whatever you your state st says. You bring that as a statement of fact. I mean, it's not really hard. The, the you, even if you could identify SARS-CoV-2 as a cause, which there, but, there is, but there is no test, if we give them that, there hasn't been this test to find that it actually, the transmission mode, to that any mitigation measure would be proper. Be that masks, be that uh, being ordered to put a chain link fence on the in front of a killer beehive, be that uh, six foot distancing, be that churches can't meet, but you can go meet in a church in a Walmart and call it a, or call it a, a protest meeting, public political protest be careful on that one churches because you're not supposed to be doing politics under the tax law for your status be very careful on what they just told you to do but the point taken depends on the words you use doesn't it and the arbitrary and capricious nature is all coming from the fact that there is no test i'm telling you how this works i've been telling everybody in fact that was a comment someone said of uh, all you people that are just becoming awake in the last five months, you got to figure out how I feel. I'm looking back. I said this stuff at the back of the beginning of the month, uh, beginning of the year, and I told you that it was coming, how, why it comes the way it's going to come, and what to do about it, how, do, how much you think I feel. And it was just a model of everything that's been we've been suffering back to 9-11 and likely before, and I can show you all that too, and I talk about it regularly. But getting back to this, the doctors lay lay out a plan to punish people who refuse coronavirus vaccine there is no alternative. Well, there is no test. Let's start there. But read this document you're going to get. Doctors lay out the plan to punish people. Remember, the punishment impose, imputes a crime to you that doesn't exist. Why are doctors doing it anyway? Shows you how insane these people who have taken, given, been given the license through the Bar Association judges to hand a tyrant in the governor absolute control. What license they now believe they have to say they want you to be punished to refuse a common cold vaccine. They claim there is no alternative. Now, I don't know how that can possibly be that there is never an alternative. Certainly, they have plenty of alternatives. If you didn't catch that, they have all the alternatives, and it's just that you're going to comply, and you're going to be left without any. And yet, there's no basis for what they're saying. And none of you are stepping up to defend yourself against this. You think forever? This is what they're, the forever punishment. Yeah, that's your civil rights, isn't it? Those of you listening for quite a while, does all this stuff fly through your head when I'm talking about it this way or not? Probably not, but uh, maybe a couple of you do. Title 42, Section 1981, right? Your punishment is your existence to every exaction that they can put on you. If you're of the status written there and you don't know how to avoid that status or show you're in a different status, which you have to do. I said, you just can't claim to not be the status. There's other people, other problem. People claim to be this status or this thing. They don't claim what they really are relative to a substantial consideration that the occupier can't, that can't disregard. And that's why I talk about savings clauses as well. Boy, I'm, I just already tell, does any, I'm talking way faster than people are putting up. I, I just know that. Savings clauses. It's all those things that are protecting the republic that are sitting there that the occupier 
why they're savings clauses that proves the occupier is there trying to subvert that the occupier under international law can't defeat in you. Doctors lay out plan to punish. Who are these doctors to punish? What happened to the, what, the Hippocratic Oath now? What, hypocrisy? What is they doing here? It's total nonsense, but they're given license by the bar not checking it, by what you thought was an executive branch that's been infiltrated by a private a private. Uh, professions union trying to convince you what they do is the law doing legal and not checking what their other members are doing on the executive side or as a bureaucrat in the administrative side where their men members are advising everybody in that government doctors lay out plan to punish boy those people need to be put in jail they don't have the right to plan to punish anybody. That's a crime. Under the color of what? A fraud. That's a crime, folks. And so it doesn't matter, I guess, if no one's going to move on it. Uh, so I'll move on. Uh, there an interesting, uh, I think Gary L. asked me a question on this. I want to touch it, uh, touch this, uh, this thing, um, this video. Very, very important. For those of you about don't understand about the there is no test, the, this is a couple of steps of understanding. I guess I want to say this. I'm trying to figure out how to approach all this comprehensively, uh, comprehensive demand that we have to know to move forward. It, it, once you get the basics, you, you'll, and you can put them in, in context, it's not that hard. This video is very powerful at the very end. For me, I was listening to it at 1.25 speed, Okay, maybe I missed something. Likely I didn't. But I was looking for a distinction between what I'd already known they could or couldn't do and if something new had popped up in this cons in this uh, discussion that was entitled From Clinical Testing to Population Screening, Molecular Genetic Testing, testing for COVID-19. Right off the bat, I know they're wrong. They're going to be telling us all they do, but on what? Sim just symptoms, right? Not the SARS-CoV-2. Now, you'll hear it mentioned in this. We'll look very carefully. My Most of my view through this thing was to analyze for myself and then to respond whether or not there was anything new here. Were they talking about a test, an actual test for the virus? You'll notice, and I want you to look at this, so it hopefully makes it more familiar to, to you, they have names of things, processes and projects, but they only reference the PCR by many different names and things. The what, polytranscriptase what, chain reaction test, which is not supposed to be used for clinical use. So the title is contrary to what they're going to tell you and also can't do symptoms. They only test you because of those symptoms, but not that the test can prove the virus it just proves why you have it proves why in the context that your immune system is functioning and so let me go through some things here to to show you if you what I would ask you all to do and this is what I did I went through on the internet YouTube and thank you to YouTube for this one allowed me to talk to look for videos specific to the PCR and what it means what it does why they do it Look at the cartoons and the graphics and the explanation from people that know about it or that I could thought I could discern that they knew about it. And I happened to choose fairly well. I think it took me three videos. The third video was to find someone who said that they knew and then compare what I thought I understand in the first two to what they said and to make see if I could find mistakes or ad advances or mis new insights or any distinction. When I got to the third one, I couldn't find a distinction. They said pretty much the same thing. I understood the process. It took me two explanations of what PCR is and does to understand the processes. Pay attention. The steps are important. This is where you get, when you read that literature I've already talked about, this is where you get to the hybrid problem as well. You've got to keep this in your mind. Anyway, getting to this video, the clinical testing population screening of COVID-19, then I find out it was about PCR. That's impossible. These people sound honest. They think they're doing something, and this is the danger. This is the, the, the disconnected danger. 
They think that they're doing something until you get to the questions at the end and the guy who does the, the guru of this, the one in the big lab that does all this, that tries to raise his numbers of testing so he can help the society get the information out, the guy named Omar, he explains a ton of stuff at the end you need to hear. But let me get to a couple points I ran through. When they talk about point of care, that's just the newest equivalent of there is no test. Okay, it's just a name for something. It's that new machine that is made to. It's a, it's it's a machine that's made to create positives. Remember, we read that from the Abbott uh, video. If you watch that on my blogcaster, uh, they're uh, all augmented PCR style antibody tests. They're not testing for the virus. That qualitative or quantitative is not causation testing. Is another thought I had. Uh, fighting the outbreak admits. Uh, now, this gentleman doesn't understand, I don't think. I think he knows, but he doesn't understand in context of how it's being applied against you, that you have to understand. He made a quote, somebody made the quote, Friday, uh, fighting the outbreak. This admits it's not an epidemic, let alone a pandemic, on the research side. And you, and how did I come to that? The CDC instructs us and the HW, the WHO, not the rock group, not the OWL, the W, the World Health Organization, the WHO, instructs us consistent with the CDC that there's a staging of things, and you'll see that in your statutes as well. We have a thing of public health concern. We then have an outbreak of that thing. That's what triggers then the that triggers the the certifi the, the certification for the determination. Then it breaks out of the local starting point into a larger area, which is called the epidemic of a communicable thing. And then the pandemic is a, a two decisions I've written off all, as well, written as about, I told you about. The pandemic local has a different dis definition than the, than the international one. The international one simply means we move from containment of the outbreak, that we lost containment, now it's moving to mitigation. It's like fire management instead of fire suppression. And he moved back to here. So he says they're fighting an outbreak. This means internally to the research system, they're not even in and out. They're not. They're still testing on the outbreak level. It hasn't even broken out from the clinical side, and it can't really break out because they can't test. There's no way for them to prove the causation. But everybody's relying on this, and they'll claim there's a test for SARS-CoV-2. And yet, you've looked close enough. The CD says there is no test. They're working on one. Remember, I've read all about this. They also admit the collection variables rec allow only a 63% sensitivity. Now we get to understand why the tests are not provable, right? We can't trust them. There's the point, though. It's not trustable, is it? But they still use it. And then they have the negative, uh, the negative problem. There's a problem with their negatives as well. And you'll hear this as you read and go through this. And I, at, uh, I'll just go through the list of the things and notes I took. I think it's important that you go back and understand what I've been talking about relative to why it's, there is no test, why this PCR can't do what it's being promoted to do, and how that's the Achilles heel for the statement, the first line statement or the first sentence statement in every governor's orders if they mention SARS-CoV-2 or that they m mention that there's a cause at all. Uh, about minute 24, the slide references house PCR. That means that there's no test because the PCR is not the test. They admit it, this whole seminar is over, and it's a couple of doctors and clinicians and all together talking. They're just talking shop, essentially. Uh, very interesting. The, the, PC, the admission of it's only relative to house PCR is what the clinic is, is the, is the uh, excuse me, not clinical. It's the research level. House PCR. It's nothing more. This whole video is nothing more than PCR. But you can't walk away because, oh, that's just because of PCR. You need to hear what they say about it so you get an understanding of what they're doing to you, how the fraud works. You get a basic understanding of what PCR is. Do the re Go back to my broadcast where I lift the documents. The inventor tells you he doesn't trust it. It wasn't made for that. He explains why. They've extended this thing out beyond its capacity and capability. They're making claims they can't back up. The question and answer section answers to all this as well, backing it up, not for me saying it, but from the guy who's doing the testing. Uh, 5425, approximately interesting disclosure there, I say for myself. Apparently, there is a testing being considered separate from the PCR for symptomatic people. And listen very carefully about the problem they have with symptomatic people. And it causes a truth to come out. It's very critical. It's now reaching the news, actually, what he says in, in the end about how long this thing is supposed to last once you, once you have symptoms and how the PCR will test positive depending on your health. 
In other words, if you have a pre-existing medical condition, that thing, that PCR will continue checking PCR. Uh, it'll get positives way into the future. Why? Because they admit they don't know the truth about this. They admit that it doesn't really check for the virus. It will just check, essentially, that your body is functioning in an immune system to throw antibodies. This interesting position about considering a se separate test for the symptomatic people off the top of my head was that, that T-cell test that they're not talking about. Remember that we got out of India. They said, the, 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 that guy says, that doctor said, we use a T-cell test to see that your immune system has responded and can protect yourself from it. Well, that means if they can test for the T cell and it exists, they can't call you a vector for the disease anymore, regardless of your positive test. And I uh, posited that they would do that, the government would do that to keep its numbers high, to keep the, m m the measures going that are killing you, that no one is stepping up to put to, uh, two and two together to make the, the equation uh, fit correctly. And so they keep moving with their numbers and you keep being beat down, maybe forever. And I say they likely know they have a real problem blaming asymptomatic positives. Forget the errors, just the fact of the asymptomatic positives becomes their problem. You'll hear a little bit of this tension in this video, and that they are not there yet. They say they're not there yet. They will get there about solving this problem. Again, what did I tell you? Look for the questions. Look for their ignorance. That is uncertainty. The science is uncertain. You would use a statement to say that, reference something like this video, you highlight the point, stay the say, statement, put it in context, and put it in as a support, if nothing more, a support for how there can be no science where any governor might well, what would you say, proclaim that science was being used. What else do I say? Yeah, they, it, they will get there as an admission they aren't there. And yet they're making decisions, and they're not there yet. And, but the, the question about they will get there, my question on that was, is that to, for the, to get to the truth or a trap? Where are they getting? And you're going to hear something very important later, that these tests' outcomes are also based on your goal what you intend the test to be, why it's not supposed to be used clinically. It is a completely malleable uh, result. Now we get into the question and answer section of this video. I hope I'm not taking too long. I really got to get moving. Uh, so very important to understand what you're hearing, even though it sounds complicated. You're listening for certain things. Once you understand what PCR does, what they're doing, why, and that they can only rely on that and that there is no test. You then listen in the question and answers to hear the admissions of the problem. In the ASIM, quote, in the asymptomatic screening world, it's really about what is in your specific goal for that test. That's huge, folks. Huge, folks. I got, wow, for my notes. I could not believe I was hearing the truth of the outcome-based test. This is... As I told you, this is one giant alternative dispute resolution process you're being subjected to. Hegelian dialectic, you're living it. For those of you that understand that, I'm telling you, research Hegelian dialectic. That ain't the first of it. It's, it's even deeper. Yeah, but we'll go on here. What did the CDC do with that? What did they do with that? That, that knowledge that the clinician tells us on his, he's the, the, the pre preeminent tester on this, using PCR, looking to solve the problems they have. The uncertainty. If this PCR is outcome based, goal based, what do, what have you seen the CDC see do with that? What has been the Gov's goal? Is exactly what you're seeing the outcome of, and you're not stopping it. Uh, about 59 minutes, 12 seconds in, patients still testing positive months after they're being asymp in asymptomatic. Uh, as we keep hearing, that's a problem. They keep promoting it, but they're finding this guy, Armar, says PCR assays don't measure what, whether or not somebody has a live virus. We're just looking for nucleic acid. In that setting, you can have every relative, a relatively high viral RNA and not be able to culture virus out of that specimen. There's an admission that you can get the RNA, nucleic acid RNA, and it won't be live. It won't be anything they can test. Well, in a way, 
The viral culture can't be cultured because why? It's not alive. It won't culture. So this, in some regard, that's the wrong test anyway. But is it responsive to a biological system? The point is, they don't have a test to test for that. He admits you can test positive and not be infectious. This thing will not put out. He goes on to say 9 to 14 days after symptoms, and this will be put into about the mitigation measures being excessive. Why have you been locked down for eight months when he says 9 to 14 days after symptoms, no matter what the CT value is, that that patient does not have infectious particles anymore? You have no more infectious particles after 14 days. Why have you been locked down and let them lock you down for eight months? Quote, he says, we don't know. We, uh, we still have a lot to learn on that. Our assays may be overly sensitive. And there's another part that I interject here for myself as a note. People shed non-infectious RNA particles for months, but positive PCR. All this you'll hear. You need to hear this. You need to see it. This is not a service to the people in this regard, he says, in another part. This is not a service. They know that this is not helping anybody, yet the CDC has been promoting to it. The, every uh, governor has been relying on this nonsense that would have all been stopped had the local uh, pu public health authority been honest and did the due process, due diligence, to determine that a virus existed. This would all have gone away. And so, let me just end right there. A lot of time has already been past me explaining this much. I need to get to the end here soon uh, to where I really want to get for you guys, for, for you folks today. This video, you read, listen, watch, get familiar with the terminology. It goes, well, I put it on 1.25, so I was kind of fat. I, I, I experienced it fast. But you're listening for, once you understand what PCR, what they're doing, what the test does, what it doesn't do, and that this tells you it's consistent with what you've learned and then they admit to the truth they don't know and the things it doesn't do and the asymptomatic problem they have and that you can be asymptomatic, which they call you, they now blame you, and not be having any viral shedding. Then you realize how to compile your notes relative to this evidence coming from this clinician to reference in your documents. You can say it in a letter. Here's a video. Here's what he said. Here's what they're talking about. Asymptomatic. I'm asymptomatic. Why are you having me locked down? What was your authority for that? You work backwards in the problem. But you refer to something objective that they're going to have to pay attention to. What are you referring to? Their, their expertise? No, you're, you're only referring to the expertise in order to show out they're telling you the truth that they don't have a clue and that this thing won't do what it's doing, and we're not servicing people by pressing the asymptomatic issue and then still testing. And what happens a few days later, the CDC comes out and says, uh, makes up a deal about how many, in three months, you know, you, you got this issue about three months susceptibility, whatever. It's all made up. They can't know. There is no test. I mean, it's pretty simple. So I see it go on. This COVID-19 PCR tests are scientifically meaningless to back it up if you need a proof. Here a doctor pr produces the facts that these are meaningless. It says what I've been telling you for months and months and months. Lockdowns and hygienic measures around the world are based on the numbers of cases and mortality rates created by so-called SARS-CoV-2 RT-PCR test used to identify positive patients, whereby positive is usually equated with infected. Well, if you read that other article, that, that, that video, and you listen to the clinician, he tells you that's not the case, does it? Is it? But looking closely at the facts, the conclusion is that the PCR tests are meaningless as a diagnostic tool to determine an alleged infection by a supposedly new virus called SARS-CoV-2. I'll let you read the rest. Saying exactly what I told you without all the benefit of these doctors in specialty, what you could read for yourself, what was out there to see, why I came up and finally committed to say there is no test and keep, keep holding on to that, and still can, and uh, Gary, Gary, thank you for bringing that to my attention. I get to see again. I'm always testing. I don't want to. I don't like spending a lot of time now testing it, but I'd like periodically to test whether or not this thing really has moved into a test or not. We need to know that. But really, there's nothing here. Here's a backing up. There really is no test. The PCR doesn't test for SARS-CoV-2. 
even if it can. I mean, if it, uh, it's just not the technology. I don't think there is the technology. That's another thing that fortified me. Let me go back to one thing that you may have missed here. But what drives the, what drives the numbers? I want to point out this. World of case, uh, the world is based on a number of cases of mortality. I have a link to just a duck, duck, go, just looking at the, the term p pandemic. I, for my display, I put a pandemic, and up to the right in a Wikipedia display, it shows what the first statements about what the term pandemic are. Let me read it for you, and you'll see why case numbers are important and why they're being driven and why they're how and you can expose how they're just driving the numbers in order to make it appear to be a pandemic but remember it can't be a pandemic within a state and each one of these states is within a closed jurisdiction where they each have to self-determine down to the county it appears and then the question is you have a couple of paths i'll get to did the did the public health authority authority do it or did the governor do it so the governor has done it but now you have to go backwards and well, where was the first outbreak, and how did you prove that? But here's the definition, pandemic. This is not the, the WHO's, the WHO, WHO's definition. I don't even think this was a, WHO, a song, was it, from the WHO? I don't think so either. A pandemic is an epidemic of an infectious disease that has spread across a large region. For instance, multiple continents or worldwide, affecting a substantial number of people, a widespread epidemic disease with a stable number of infected people is not a pandemic. Let me read that last quest sentence. That's the here's the point: a widespread epidemic disease with a stable number of infected people is not a pandemic. This is why they have to keep the numbers up. This is why they have to keep the numbers and the goalposts changing. They're attempting to make it appear to be a pandemic because that's driven locally by numbers. Their suggestion of the continent a worldwide effect happens to be the international standard. The two regions, that's they're implying the WHO standard there. We've talked about that. I've read you those those um, that phasing. But they didn't actually, I told you, and I've got a link to that. We'll get to that here. I'm going to put it in again. The WHO never changed its assessment and only characterized this thing as a pandemic. Folks, there is no test. They, they, can't have no, they don't have a basis. So why you're seeing the numbers trying to be elevated, why they're converting flu numbers into, into uh, COVID-19 claims of, by symptom, by flu-like symptom, because they need to keep the numbers up to justify the labeling of a pandemic. And so this is, again, the way you, you prove it out. You just say, you see that, well, I wouldn't even go this far, but if you plan to be someone who did, you would point out that the numbers that they're being used are really essentially cooked books, and they're doing that to cover the fraud, because if they don't have this, then it loses its impetus. In fact, if you can show that there isn't and it's stable, then, uh, again, and it's, it's, it becomes ubiquitous. If it is forever, let me give you another answer there. If it does become forever, it just becomes seasonal. It's not novel. So they'll be careful to buy into that as well. You just have to go back to the definitions. The terms are right there for us to do. I'm going to include the faith in quick test leads to epidemic that wasn't. That's that uh, whooping cough thing showing the PCR led uh, what I would believe good faith people to believe in whooping cough, but see it doesn't test for whooping cough. It just tests that you got an infection. They found out that's in fact the case. Whatever caused that infection ended up disappearing. And so I'm going to include that link again for those of you that are interested to take responsibility, to at least start inquiring, getting that disclosure that you want, and to prove for yourself by, if you will, hounding your, your officials that are keeping you in the prison, hound the warden with, with their basis, and you do it intelligently. You don't argue. In fact, the people that you meet, I think I quoted this to some, I wrote this to somebody, make allies out of the people that you're dealing with in the government. Don't, don't try to make enemies. They'll just start closing the doors. You don't, you, you need to, you don't need to, you don't need to uh, make friends with the enemy. What you need to do is just not make an enemy. They can be an ally, as you, if you will. Even if their opinion is contrary, you just focus in on the objective basis that you both have to follow. So you get out of opinion. Here's a, a, um, a fly in the ointment. America is against a general, man, a general mandatory vaccination. America's obesity epidemic threatens effectiveness of any COVID vaccine. Again, COVID now is the common cold, not COVID-19. That's specific coronavirus, which there is no test. Coronavirus, generally, they're trying to say they're going to have a common cold vaccine. And 
a pre-existing mental condition called obesity can thwart all that. That brought up in my mind to tell you any medical condition, and we have the proof of that, can cause this. That little seminar that they did, he tells you in that when he shows you that the PCR can continue to go with a comorbidity ahead of that many, many, many months, way many months after. He's saying that your body is shedding all this response for your body fighting off your ailment that you may or may not know. Now, obesity is kind of obvious. It's a, sta a physical standard. Let me jump on another thing without getting too far afield. I don't know if you know this, but if you look at the mortality to malnutrition, the exact opposite, it has, a, I think, about a three-time more uh, a serious rate in the, in the United States than supposed all the numbers of coronavirus, even giving them the, the lie in the cookbooks. And what causes the, the, the flu-like symptoms is malnutrition. And they're not even looking at that. All the money they're putting into a vaccine, they could be focusing in on something that's three times worse, malnutrition in the country. I told you there's nothing for want in the United States of America if they wanted to set it up. It's been set up to do that. But you're seeing the, the opposite. They could solve with all the money, they could solve malnutrition in this country, short of those that don't want to eat. I mean, you're not... I guess you could force feed them, but that's not the way that works either. But malnutrition has a three, I think a three time more mortality rate than COVID. And we could be dumping all that money if we were going to do, wanted to do something to get rid of flu-like symptoms. And we want to do something to solve a problem. We could have solved more. Uh, the opposite of obesity would be solving malnutrition. And malnutrition is what? It causes about everything. I mean, anything biological, you've got to have a problem in your system. It's not quite up to standard. Your food system's killing you. And then what? No, we don't. See, you can be eating and still be malnourished, folks. Don't kid yourself. At any rate, so it was, obesity is a comorbidity that can, that can make, invalidate the vaccine. What you're, you're wanting to see is that any comorbidity could be violative of the vaccine. And this invalidates they're still going to pull, push it through, and the bar associated will likely be there, but this allows you to say that the interference by this tyrant is now going to presume a, fe a measure that can't be known is correct and is going to likely harm me because we are now seeing evidence that comorbidities or, or, hidden, mid or hidden medical, more importantly, actually, for those of you that think you're healthy and aren't, will be detrimental to your death. There's no remedy for that. And what I just told you, that's the extraordinary remedy requirement. You start stating that stuff and you empower yourself into the remedy that they can't throw you out of. Federal judge rules Cuomo de Blasio exceeded authority by restricting religious services while condoning protests. It's inside their mitigation. It's not something I prefer. This would be a step back alternative to an argument, I, if it, well, until uh, to a presentation I would put of that should be self-evident in the alternative, I would say, and I would argue against the uh, mitigation measures, uh, should the court find that, there, that the cause itself, it has the power of judicial notice to do so, but when you show up with the evidence that says that there is no test, and here's what the authorities say about that, there is no test, what's the judicial notice going to be when they go look out, is there is no test. You assert all that in the facts, simple, there's a few sentences here. So then you do in the alternative, given the court can find, then we're going to argue, we're going to then argue that, that the restriction of religious services while condoning protests is improper. In this case, it's shown now that is improper. We've heard that before. Not even a new story. There's more. This only happens when you step up and do something. though. And I know it's relying on the same bar system, but as I was talking to, writing to somebody this weekend, that's where you have to be, I can say creative enough to start binding up the code in such a way that you at least elicit the embarrassment of the system to even go where they go, or you constrain the ability for the court to decide, like I just did, saying if the judicial notice finds and declares from its source that the, the test exists, declare what the test is, and then tell us where the governor used it, it is, a, is a way of blocking in the the way to make a, the remedy stick. And then it really starts to put the pressure on if they start to fall from what the standard would be. And that's the evidence everybody, I think, needs to see whether or not they're going to act. I don't know. 
government quietly drops 1.3 COVID tests from England, Tally. Uh, okay, I mean, here's the point. This is all cookbooks. They're finding out they do problems. They send out tests. They don't actually get done. They Just because they acted, they presume it's going to happen. They put the tally on. Why? They're looking for every reason to maintain the pandemic. Why is that? Because they need numbers. That's what it's all about. And that's what the point is. And that's invalid for its own sake. Moving on. COVID-19 PCR tests are, uh, so I guess I said that again, scientifically meaningless. Uh, yes, go through that. I just said it. I guess I have that twice. Means I probably have another tab missing. But moving on, what the United States government's doing, the state health department, you think this is all locking you down in prison? Well, they're lifting the global level four uh, global health advisory, United States Department of State, on August 6th in close coordination. Coordination, understand what that is, with the United States Center of Disease Control and Prevention, the Department of State lifted the global level four health advisory. The global advisory initially uh, put in place in March 19th, 2020. Advised U.S. citizens to advise U.S. citizens to avoid. You have a right to travel, right there, folks. But they advise to avoid an international travel due to the global impact of COVID-19. Now, there's some prudence about that. If you've got a nasty flu going out, like we heard, this is the worst in the decade, or has been, not now anymore. I don't know how. I don't know what numbers are using to cook the books now, but now they're pressing on next flu. But uh, anyway, do you. You may have been prudent not to travel while that was going on, like any flu season, like your avoidance. I mean, you want to stay away from people. Stay away from them dirty humans. Stay away from them uh, damn dirty apes. Yes, you want to protect yourself. Don't be stupid. But if this is a fraud, they only give advisories. They're lifting that anyway with the CDC and knowledge. So what's your governor working on? I don't know. And to show again about this PCR test, how really ridiculous it becomes. Not we just we have the papaya, we have the goat, we have the pheasant, and now we got chicken wings out of Brazil are testing COVID-19 positive. Yes, there's a new evidence of food transmission. They say, well, that's not true. They don't know what the transmission is, but at least it's riding on the back of chicken. And so this again, they're just looking for character. You'll listen in that video that I point that Gary provides. You listen that they're looking at different aspects. Each test looks at some different aspect. Well, if the chicken had some aspect that threw the nucleic acid for that aspect, it's going to throw a positive, period. That's it. Anyway, so be careful your chicken wings from, from Brazil. They're going to throw you a positive. And we move on now to what, the, what Russia wants to do. And I found a very interesting dynamic in this. Actually, I think it opened up a, a revelation to me relative to how someone... It can be so powerful that they could guide your thoughts and get your agreement on whatever they were being the savior, if you will. I think I now understand. I couldn't understand how they were going to entice the world into a into destroying itself, and then then COVID nineteen ex explained how they could do that. And, and then I was wondering, well, how how does someone come along on many different fronts? many different disasters and become the savior for those. How does that even happen? And I think we have uh, evidence of that here through Russia approving Sputnik V COVID vaccine despite testing safety concerns. This story came out. Russia says they have a vaccine for coronavirus. Uh, the rest of the Western world was aghast saying there's no safety test because they don't want Russia to have this for sure, if it is anything. And uh, so reading through, it's interesting to read through what they've done. They've done an interesting thing here. They've actually taken a different type of virus, genetically engineered it with a spike that's all neutralized. But the body responds. It's kind of like works like an adjuvant on its own. The body responds to both the carrier. They call it it's, why it's called Sputnik is because they likened it like a rocket and a capsule. And so the rocket is this adenovirus, and they put on this other other capsule, this this point and they inject the first time and it sets the adenovirus and then they inject you a second time and it releases the the body then it, by its function releases the capsule then attacks that so you're actually getting protect your body actually protects against it so it's not a nothing and i found it interesting about two days after i posted a, a statement on about this uh, in code if you will someone said well what if it's just salt water and I had already thought, yeah, that, that's about what this could be. And no one would know because there is no test. But it won't be because the, the science has to look for something. What are they going to look for? 
Russians already know they're going to use what test? The PCR. And if it throws, all they got to do is put something in your body that throws the PCR to show that it's working, see? That's all they need to do. They already know the, P, the, the nucleic acid RNA lasts for a long time. So Russia's looking at cover here, no matter what they do. And so, interesting dynamic. They have come up with the COVID. The Western science said, no, it does. That's impossible. What shocked me was uh, Putin allowed his daughter, before all this testing, to take this. That shut my mouth opened up. It was one of those other ones that my mouth opened up. And I, that's what got me thinking. That guy wouldn't do that to his daughter unless they know something. Now, I'm not saying that they're doing this, but I do put a lot of, of, of uh, value on the Russians can play chess. They're great chess players. They also have a principle that's, uh, I think, unsurpassed anymore in the world at this point. And I have a, looking at a, a rule, uh, someone who's leading a country says, we got a real problem here. They know the truth of it. Now, I don't understand. I can't see the, the validity. I don't know what the heck they're really fighting because I don't see the test. But they understand no matter what, people believe it. Their whole populations believe in this. They can't fight Western propaganda. And so what is his answer? Let's develop what we need to develop. Maybe for real. Do what we think we, we have to do. And then we'll present this. But we're going to make one safe. Why? It's safe because we know how we've been studying how to make safe ones that just cause your body to do something, but not necessarily particular. Another title here, Russian coronavirus, WHO says rigorous safety data review needed. Well, that's on the Western style. That's that as an obstruction. But what if it was a biological that was put in you? It doesn't have any adjuvants to cause problems. It's really just this biological agent that, in fact, does cause your immune system to function. And it's not harmful. Certainly not more than what's going on, and certainly not to cause trouble. It's going to pass those tests. Ultimately, the Russians are going to move. But here's the here's the game. The game is that they're up against a big fraud, and a fraud is vitiated by itself. A fraud allows and gives license to any almost I think anything to stop it. That it occurred to me after I saw Putin giving his daughter this for a test to, you know, you saw it, you can understand the promotion that is. That if the Russians offered the world something that does trigger the PCR test, but wasn't so bad as to really cause any trouble, they could show the science would test for the, the injection to work. When in fact, relative to what's the promotion, that they th everyone thinks they can cause treat the common cold, it's a placebo. It's an active placebo. I'm not actually saying it is because I'm not. I don't have that, that that knowledge. What I'm saying is I see another op, and I think if this is 5D, this is brilliant. In fact, I think I say that, don't I? When I say that, why Sputnik moment? Sputnik, when Russians' first COVID vaccine triggered sour grapes reaction, well, we understand why the money. See, it's all about the money. What do I say? Uh, skeptical about the vaccine so long? No, this is from a Syrian girl. Russia, girl. Russia made COVID vaccine, so now the media, the mainstream media says we are allowed to be skeptical about the efficacy of the vaccine so long as it comes from Russia. The geopolitization of the vaccines, I say, in response to that safety aside, again, I'm looking at this daughter getting this injections, Wow, what a what a um, sacrifice he would be making unless he knew. Anyway, safety aside, Russia is claiming a vaccine for the common cold uh, or flu-like symptoms. Really? Russia deserves the peace prize or should be eminently embarrassed because no known vaccine can stop the common cold or flu. Let me add what I didn't say. Because they're also not novel, they're seasonal, they can't be stopped. Now get back to what I said here. Or, Putin played 5D. Placebo cures COVID-19 fraud saves world. Brilliant. They developed something. They they're not they're not pipsqueak in the world of virology. Okay, they got their own their own bacteriological weapon system. These people know what they're doing, like the United States does. Maybe the technology is different, but they're not. They're doing things that even the Western world doesn't even understand. Why'd they come up with hypersonic missiles before the the United States got their finger out of their ear over it? But at any rate, 
So they've been looking at a very particular type of science for decades that they've been working with. They've actually been doing things with it. They implemented that here. What if this was enough to test, to fit function underneath the fraud of all the science, but itself was a placebo? Why? Because Putin has to end this nonsense for his people, most importantly. And so, a thought, maybe too far extended. We get to the point where I wanted to go today, and I do have some time. Thank you very much. All the stuff to want to talk. I'm truncating a little bit of what I wanted to say, but it's got to get to this because it's not about me talking. It's not about my opinions. It's about us countering the tyranny that's, that's developed in us in a comprehensive way. As I came into the year saying the worst that we were going to face in the continuation of the 9-11 initiation was the medical tyranny, medical, medical martial law, and... Uh, except for the outward appearance that you don't see military, I don't know how you define what you're under than a martial law. Notwithstanding that, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who believes me. It doesn't matter if you believe the same. If you're in quarantine or you're suffering all the response from the public, you're suffering it. You're underneath that same condition. Now, I want to touch on something. As I've been working with a few people, I have been trying to assess how to tell people better how to explain what we need to focus on to move it through. And I'm doing that based on my experience, decades and decades of re research and, and implementation, the experience I've garnered, the in insights I've had, taking successes where we can, watching how the system, the, the, the uh, amoeba, parasitic amoeba responds, and adjusting all this and moving through, looking at what the Bar Association gives to itself to continue in justice under the color of justice, all this stuff comes into play. It's a lot to do. It's a lot to consider. A lot of people just give up. But that means we're slaves if we do. And I don't I just can't get into just giving up. But let me let me address something here. The for those of you that want to start to for that disclosure, just to get it on the record for yourself. You got some time maybe you got some time now that you've been quarantined all the quarantine you listen to quarantines on the Grimner on Sunday and you get do your thing and you do your weekend and Monday rolls around. What are you doing if you're not going to work and all that kind of stuff? I don't know. I don't know what you do with your time, but you want disclosure, you want to start becoming a thorn in the side of what what's going on. You want to start making a record. You're gonna to have to follow the objective basis on what someone the duty that someone was owed underneath the construct that they profess to operate. I've told you to find the duty of the health official to make the determination. I've seen enough people asking for help now across different, many different states. It's really, really consistent. The due process is a bit different, but it's all very consistent. So much so that when someone brings me a, something they think is the, the thing they need to work on, I can track back through where they don't know I don't even know the state's laws, but I can track through because I know what I'm looking for and find the statute that I'm talking about is in every state so far, however it states it. It's, and I'm going to go touch that now. For those of you that want to start becoming a thorn in the side of these people and put yourself on record to have the doubt that they have the authority, whether or not you ever perfect it, you need to look for the statute, and it comes through a different couple of different things, the health authority, the epidemic authority, and the process by what duty is put on that health authority, whether that, in this state, I'm going to read to you, is a, is the pub, local public health authority, which will be defined. It could be the county itself. It might be then redelegated to a local health um, department. But there's going to be an objective written basis for that, or it could be a state commissioner, as this state you'll hear says, that's another opportunity for the imposition. And then I want to throw out, which is not in this statute, but just hold on in your mind, the governor has an independent authority. And you'll see that stated in the orders. So you start with the order that declares this emergency. They're back in March and stuff. And they kept changing some of them. you got to kind of collect those up. Get those in your folder for your facts. Find the first order. Find the authority. That will probably be what the governors did. They went through a general emergency authority. Okay, fine. And this becomes a little bit of a confusion. I think it's a confusion because I think I understand it. It's not a, I don't think it's a confusion for me. Those orders don't have any method. They don't have any determination of how they can support what they say. 
And so that's where I'm saying you assert that there needed to be, whether or not you can find it when you're now thinking about this. But you're looking for whatever health authority has been delegated the power to have the duty to do certain things during or after the notice that there's a potential of some sort of epidemic or political health concern. Let me read you this. These are similar words you'll be looking for. You'll know you're there when you see this statute that says these words or something very similar. It is the duty of the local health authorities on receipt of a report of a case or suspected case or of disease declared to be communicable, contagious, or one which has been declared by the commissioner of health to be subject to isolation or quarantine, to confirm or establish the diagnosis, to determine the source or cause of the disease, and to take such steps as may be necessary to isolate or quarantine the case or premise upon which the case, cause, or source may be found as may be required by the rules and regulations of the State Department of Health. Let me start up front again. It is the duty of the local health authority. You're looking for that. This imposes that duty when, once it's in receipt of a report of a case of a disease declared to be communicable. Look at the hierarchy and chronology Every point you do, you're going to have to keep applying when was this done. Now, because the governor set out and made a declaration, and I don't know state by state when that was done relative to wet, the first outbreak possibly may have happened locally. Your evidentiary trail and your disclosure that you're looking for, Turner Shaman, is when you cite this uh, this section, you find this in your laws. It's going to, I'm not giving you a number. I'm not even telling you this, the state. If you Quote my words, you'll be able to find which state this is in the search. But you quote this section, whatever section it is, that has states it is the duty. Now, all you're then wanting to know is, did the re- they did that local official receive a report? And you can quote this. Did you receive quote a report of ca- or ca- of a case of suspected a suspected case? of a disease declared to be communicable, contagious, or one which has been declared by the Commissioner of Health, quote, uh, period, close quote. Can you d- tell me when you were in receipt of the report or the Commissioner's declaration? Why are you doing that? Because it's the duty, once they get the case report, to do what? You read down farther, and it says to determine the source. Among other things on top of that, you would ask, I paused, when I was pausing, I was pausing at a comma, which is like you putting down the numbers 1, the pause is comma 2, pause is comma 3, and then reading. It's a thing that has to be qualified. And you're looking for the evidence of that by the black and white, not what you think has to be, but what the duty was and the obligation was to the one it was assigned to, delegated even so. A delegation, you have to go back up, Comes, it'll be executive side has to go to the governor. They're the chief executive officer of the corporation and or the respondent superior and or the uh, commander in chief. Because remember, this is all under emergencies as well. Remember I said that. This is like a military attack. And so you go and you find the evidence based on the duty they have under the condition. It's not invoked because they evade. It's invoked when the condition exists. And all you're looking for, you're not making any decisions here. You're just merely looking for the evidence of the existence or non-existence. Because there's a track that you have to follow ultimately. Because it could be either the local health authority or the commissioner or the governor that instigates this. You, you, you have to qualify where this thing started. Then you can use it backwards. Because here, the commissioner of health to be subject to the isolation. Let's say in the middle, the commissioner makes the declaration. It says the duty of the local health authorities upon receipt of the case or that is to establish the cause. 
So if you establish that the local health authority received it, then you're then asked, what was the determination and how did you determine the cause? Can I see evidence of that? You're not arguing with them. You're not having an argument. You're not trying to plead the case. You're not doing anything. You're just looking for evidence or the existence or non-existence of the evidence based on this black and white guidance, this thing that they are obligated to, not you. And so you're building the case evidence of the existence or non-existence, the non-existence of which where there's a duty, you can rely on their word that it doesn't exist. If you want a little further proof in the emergency sense, you can send a letter stating your phone call, if you do it by phone call, and say, because I think I would, this would be by phone call for me unless you just get some obstinacy and you really want to need to do something more. Or you send a letter and follow up and say, we, I called you, this is your name, this is what you said, this is, you told me this is the, uh, the health authority that's obligated to do this, and their statement is that there was, there was no receipt and there was no determin therefore no determination. And you have that evidence without all the certificates of service and all that. For this moment, you would explain that as a line item. You're taking reliance on their word. And you have a follow-up of that, which in the letter you say, if you fail to respond, and with being the emergency this is, if you fail to respond in seven, seven, seven days, I ex rely upon the fact of the truth of this, of this, um, this statement about our call. That's all. You're not, you're not ordering any demanding. You're not doing anything. You're just finding the fact or existence of what. For this case, on the local health of, uh, official, the report of the case. Go to the commissioner's office now, because here we have two. You ask the very same thing. You're after the very same information. Did, it orig did the report originate from you, or did you receive the report? And how did you confirm this was the contagious element. How did you do that? I'm not, you hear me, I'm not really arguing that there's no test. I'm saying, what did you find and how did you find it? Can I have written proof of that or an acknowledgement that it didn't happen? And if it's, can I get even a link to a website? Can I can get the information that way? You do your due diligence of a reasonable person looking for the evidence to confirm the compliance with the duty imposed when the condition happens. Now, let me, for this pur purpose, you're looking for this duty, you're looking to qualify the steps, and you're looking to see what was supposed to be done, and all you're doing is you're asking for documentation. This is a country of notice. You're looking for documentation. Evidence written in paper is reduced to writing. I mean, evidence is reduced to a writing in every court. That's why you have transcripts. Go f if you have to find all this, I mean, you know you're up against a more of a resistance, but you, these things will be in your state. These principles are in your state, I guess. See, I speak from what I already know is supposed to be, and they'll have to acknowledge it. And maybe that's part of the problem here. It doesn't communicate well. These words are not, under, not understandable. It says it's the duty of the local health authorities, once it receives, as a receipt of a report, to, to determine the source. To determine the source of the cause of the disease. And I just had a power outlet. Uh, we're going to be off, at any rate. Uh, and so, when you uh, in, just assert that statute, and you just make sure that that's going to be the evidence is there to 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 go on. It's either there or it's not. Okay. So then you get to the commissioner. Relative to this statute, you're done. Relative to this statute, you're com now getting guidance on what information must be compiled. That starts to form the basis that you then apply to the governor's order, which probably comes by a different, a different um, authority. You impose, he's the top exec, health executive of this chain of authority that was delegated down. If you get letters that say that they did not get, there is no certification. There is no actual finding. It was merely on the presumption of a foreign source. Then what did the governor use is your first question to them. And now you get to inquire, what did the governor, how, what was the standard the governor used? What was the thing the governor used to, that is this statute says is the reasonable and prudent due process to fulfill? It's just an inquiry. I'm not making any determinations. I'm neutral as I can be. I want to know what the heck this is. 
torn earth shaman. You want disclosure? I'm telling you how you go about it in a way that they can't deny you. And if they deny you and it's a duty, you now have your cause at least. You at least have the cause in the fact of the denial. And you get to question. You get to rely on it. The things you don't have actual proof, you rely on after due diligence. You have to make the statement, the study state, the um, uh, the statement of fact, statement of how your due, what your due diligence was. So I, I don't know the the statute guides how you're going to proceed. The statute provides the objective basis that the occupier has to use. And so I, if you don't do that, they don't have to. If you don't do that, they can ignore you. If you take opinion outside of that, they can call you whatever. They can call you a terrorist if they want. When you're inside of that, then it, it they can't. And so for those of you that are back online, I'm having a trouble on my end uh, relative to connecting. And... Uh, We'll, we're going to have to compile the we'll compile the the um, excuse me the the file after is the only thing I can do. Having some continuing problems here trying to hook up. I've got one or two lines running and they keep disconnecting, and so we'll continue to try here. Uh, getting back to the point of this, here here's an example of how you go about taking the black and white code and causing it to be something you can use that all the parties involved are going to be able to to use. That's objective, that can't be denied. You'll place those at statement of facts. It doesn't have to be that, that much. It, it can be just the fact that you did these things and relied upon these things. In order to Excuse me, I'm kind of going a couple of doing, doing things. I don't do two things at once very much, very well. No, I'm not a multitasker. So I should be back on now, having some serious pro trouble. I hope uh, the file is okay. And we're going to continue going on here. Back as I get my mind back to this. You're going to utilize the objective base of the statute to put back the duty and say, where's the evidence this has been complied with? First of all, where did you get the, re the reported case? Where? Because why do you want to know where? Because that's where the outbreak thing, that's where the outbreak, the, the public concern starts. If you, you have evidence, see, the complaint is, or the, uh, not a complaint, the observation is, if the authority doesn't come through the statute that has the duty, then the governor did an emergency statute, how do we, how do we control the governor? Well, what's the standard? They still have to have proven the test. As I was, my reference to the one art, uh, art, uh, the email I sent was, if the government, if the governor declares the sky is falling, and that's a public health concern, that the local authority has to step out to look to see if that's the case. And so this is how this works. This is the check and balance. If it's not a check and balance, then we have the tyranny because we have no due process. We have no notice. We have no notice, opportunity, time, and place. Let me get back to this. It is the duty of local health authorities. You're only asking about the condition and the proof of whether the condition works is or is not. If you find that the commissioner made the declaration, I don't think either the commissioner or the local health authority made it. They just received the report from the governor. That still invokes the problem for the local authority. And what you're doing there, if it isn't in the territory, and I didn't have an outbreak here, how did you say the whole state was involved? If you don't have an outbreak at all, we didn't even need to do the test. We didn't focus on the governor. The authority was brought by a different statute. What was the objective basis you used to qualify that this was the emergency you claim? Why? Because we need to see whether or not you are committing a usurpation of office and or harm that's not provided for under the Constitution that requires in most states to be at least happy, and I'm not happy. So make a case for yourself. Take your, your con it's not fear, I guess it is consternation. You're fearful the way you should be moving on this. Assert what you think you know through the filter of the statute 
make it work, and then press the official to the requirements. You're just looking for the evidence. If you find that there, none of this has been done, you have a cause for lots of remedies. Now, the, what's interesting in this one state I'm reading from, they have the, uh, the, the bar association member intercedes on the remedy that they've chosen. And so I'm not stopped by that. I'll get around. I worked all around that stuff. And if not, we'll just step back and we'll look at and reassess for a different, a different remedy. I've been offering to you the most simplest one. Those of you locked down by some, you have an unwarranted restraint of a fundamental liberty you can, fo you can point out. And that's being harmed. I've been advocating the habeas corpus, partly because it's the easiest. It's not, I know some people are still wanting to put that together and still have it, but it really is not that hard. You're, a lot of folks are making it harder than it really is. Yes, there's some formality to it. I don't mean the form. I mean there are certain things and elements you have to include. But those are all listed. And yes, there's some certain ways you should be speaking about to those to make your, your, state, your step best, your step putting your best foot forward. But it's not impossible. Remember, you should be able to write this thing out with a, you know, out of your blood on a piece of paper, actually. The habeas wasn't supposed to be so difficult. So you're looking for the, the fundamentals of the common law to be exercised and the expectation of the court to see that. We have the additional problem of the corruption in the court. That can be contained by, a t by heading off all the places that they might go relative to a remedy. And in this case, we're in this state where the the bar association has to step in and look at the case and gives its its blessing, and you don't want to do it that way. You have to come up with a different another set of facts, and then you'd be ready for that the addressment that says that you don't have standing to do that remedy, and then you come back with the what you would put together. And I, in a nutshell, without going very far, that would be thou relying upon the remedy required in the Constitution, the condition being futile and uh, and and obstructive enough that the your remedies, uh, your remedy required by the Constitution is being obstructive. You're coming in uh, with that authority that you then may have to attack whether or not it was proper to cause the DA to intercede. There's a way at it. You just, I'm just kind of giving you roughing you out a real quick thing. You can't give up when you when you see what, there's an obstruction. I tell you this, this is created as an obstruction. And a lot of us won't make the basic record to even show it's futile. What futility is a, a cause? You can't do it from your opinion. It's like you can't just say, oh, the, the, they, they didn't determine. You, you have, you don't, we don't know that. We don't know what they're doing behind the scenes. So you ask them. They do have to tell you. If they don't, you can rely in the absence of the evidence of that that it didn't happen. If you found it when you get to court that they did have it, it's not on you. You you would I would actually build in that that was a deception that wasted your time because guess what? When they don't have a test, they don't know what. And their mitigation members, you prove as an additional thing, their mitigation me measures have failed based on all the numbers and the masks and the continuation. And it's uh, when eight months, not fourteen days. All oh, that's proof against them. On the mitigation side, as I said, you prove whether out whether or not they have the stuff. If 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 they surprise you and they come up with it, then now you're back on the now you're stepping back to mitigation. Well, their mitigation is faulty. They've determined, but it's continuing. You you do whatever it you you're moving forward or whatever action you're doing. If it's an injunction, you enjoin all that stuff that hasn't worked. Maybe just against you, but that sets the example. This, so this thing is, in a way, it's not. It's it's continuing because you all allow it. You should be. I can't see why people, in defense of themselves, in responsibility to themselves, are not looking at the unwarranted restraint. Even you know, whether you can find it into a habeas discussion or not, the unwarranted infringement. I'll put it that way. That's more constitutionally asserted. The infringement is unwarranted, can't be proven, that you continue to complain without a, without a peep, without a letter. And listen to me, and I tell you where to go to get the duty they're supposed to impose, they're imposed to have the answer to give you. I don't understand what the continuing problem is, because I don't see them, the occupier, is the problem now. This place was made to take from you. You're letting them. 
I don't know what more how more dose of reality to get on this. But anyway, so let's uh, maybe move on here. Another thing I think Timothy was saying, I might be able to get to that. So that's those of you that are wanting to do this, maybe you can listen to what I said. I hope I get the file together pretty quickly. It uh, looks like we had a technical difficulty. I'll try to put that together. Interesting that it happens on that. Interesting that it happens when I'm explaining. Like it, interesting it happened at the uh, uh, BTWRLM381. I had the my band. Uh, that number I won't I just won't I won't stick on it too hard. That number is very interesting in my life, and it what happened to me with the, underneath that number. I've been waiting to look at that. It's very interesting that numbered episode was banned. That's indicative of my life in that number. It's pretty interesting. Anyway, moving on here. Timothy writes a question uh, for you all. I want to make a comment. I want to get to this pretty quickly. I've talked about this a little bit, but in particular, again, if you're not understanding or listening to what I'm saying and applying it, it kind of goes in one ear or at the other. If you haven't heard, then you don't understand really uh, how simple it is. It's also understand that if you don't know, this is how divorced we are from our system, the system that's run, learned how to take advantage of the fact that you don't know. And so the question is important why I'm going to address this. Is it so insufficient to write a letter to the, quote, contact, close quote, email? Use their whereas and counterpoints with notes, etc. Email page says it goes to public record. My local has board of commish. Maybe you can speak to this uh, behind the woodshed. So I have to take a lot of assumptions on this. I think it's kind of a, it's relatively understandable. Is it insufficient to write letter to the contact email? If the if the email is how they've instructed you to contact them, no. If uh, if they offer, then then you would just con do the comment through that avenue. And now we've gone to uh, e government, which I would um, well, there's a whole other discussion there, but then uh, that's kind of going to be the preferred way. Using the whereases to counterpoints, that's unnecessary in your response. That's really more a technical. And I've I looked through all my documentation. I've never used a whereas in a comment. I have used them when I was asked by an author, um, um, a jurisdiction to formulate a policy where they would then present that to the public. And that happened to be on the fire the the fire policy where I did the an analysis on how to use the federal wildfire policy uh, act in order to show the local governments had the power and how they would institute institute that again reinstitute it and then put that back into into control and I'll tell you folks it's been the last few years been no smoke folks it's just been great don't let them start the fires in the summer and all of a sudden at least for us it's been a lot nicer so we've never I've never used whereas in a comment and so they're they're unnecessary. The email page goes public. Understand everything you do with the government's public. So understand, say your words correctly. Put them in specifics. I think I mentioned that to to him. I said email sounds fine. Best write the brief plainly in exact points. Attach any support documents. Follow up. Send the conversation, but go and comment back to them and see did they receive it? Did they take it in? All right, you got to understand that that has to happen. Follow up. Be, I said, make ally. At the end of the day, I said, make allies with people. Whereas are unnecessary, and I went and explained that. Call the county secretary for what's required, if not on the website or for an agenda item to speak to. You have to get on the agenda item, and then go in and take take the time. You get two or three minutes. Make it count. I've told you. I've shown you how you can talk in 20 seconds at a time, point after point. Assert the point you need to say. You don't argue with them. You just assert the point and the fact that they need to be aware of. Again, these are people who are supposed to represent you, and you can monitor that. All right, so I hope hope that's a kind of an explanation. Uh, Grimner, I thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. Allow me to come here and plug in and sometimes stay hooked up all the time and uh, let people know what they think. I'm sure that's what they need to do, what they're not doing. Uh, Jules at ucy.tv, thank you. Sound Minds, Normalization of Ignorance. Um, the folks, uh, all of you at Britshoot Minds, thumbs up, thumbs down. Like I said, if you thumbs down, I certainly want to hear the comment. If you thumbs up, I'd like to hear what you have to think about it too. But thumbs down I'm, it, it is a potential for me to get it, uh, get clarity and or uh, understand something I may do to a technical difficulty. I have to cut this a little bit short and uh, just to finish out, thumbs down with a statement will help me understand something I may not understand. I didn't know that I can then incorporate it with what I know. 
what I do know now, and I can tell other people. And I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. Feels like. Son, he just opened a whole case of whoop ass.